All right, a little bit of a disclaimer before the video starts. I had to pitch uh, or like edit the audio for every cut pretty much post like 2011. I'm sorry, but I don't want King Records or whoever to be on my tip. I want you guys to be able to watch this video. If I wouldn't have done that, y'all would not have been able to see this because uh, literally even if I played like Miracle Gliders or B Starters, my video, they're not going to let me do it. Okay, so first before getting into everything, I want to bring up that uh, Eri Kitamura also worked on Orange from Toradora along with Yui Horie and Rai Kugamiya. Um, I didn't bring it up because I didn't feel like it was a primary Eri Kitamura release, whatever that means. But it is a classic song and also Kararuki or whatever is on uh, the little single and that's a really good song. Okay, I want to start with the single Taste of Paradise for the anime Oni Zenzen. I actually remember watching this Oni a couple years ago, but I hardly remember most of it other than the character designs being terrible. They have like monkey ears. I kind of remember like the details with like, the, I think it was like childhood friend and like his sister. It's, I don't know, it's kind of corny. I don't know if I'll come back to it, maybe I feel like I kind of have to. However, despite the anime being kind of like questionable, this is actually one of her hardest singles to me. Uh, both of these songs are really good. The title track, Taste of Paradise, being used for the opening of Oni Zen Zen, and the other song, Yell, being a character song of some sort if I had to guess. Both of these songs are super hard and kind of give into that cheery rock style that Eddie Kitamu would later develop on pretty much throughout, I guess, maybe since Restory, which would be a year or so after this. The next single would be B Starters, which was used for the anime Mario Chiki. I never actually watched Mario Chiki. Or no, I did watch Mario Chiki for 10 seconds. The context being, uh, I was into Switch modding for a bit, like heavily. And I was testing like the little video uh, player that was out at the time. And I had like Mario Chiki on, on the SD card for some reason. And I watched it for like a minute. Uh, I did read the manga though, it was alright, don't remember that much of it though, I'll be honest. And I happen to own it. I came across the song first though, back in my Osu days. B Starters is a pretty cute song, however, the second song, Sai, kinda stands out to me most. It is straight up ethereal. It is heavenly. I, I, I don't know, I love this song so much, it's one of my favorite Kita Eddy cuts. And it's sad it didn't get included on Restory while B Starters did make the cut. Like, it's got this part with like this auto tune. I don't know. Y'all listen, it's a great song. <laughs> Okay, so I'll just blow these out of the way both at a time. Eddie Kitamura has a single Happy Girl, with the titular cut being the opening for the anime Papa Kiki, which I rewatched maybe like a couple days ago, uh, Sunday, uh, as of writing this. But she also did a character song for the same Ani uh, called Brilliant Days for the character she voiced, Miyu Takanashi, which 
funnily enough, is also a blonde, what is it, twin tail type girl, like Coco Noe we're in. Very interesting. Uh, this opening is a classic, dog. Like, visually, freaking sonically. It's like a cute little, you know, love song type, uh, what you call it, like a freaking I love you bae type cut, like a when, like, you know, uh, when, uh, like, uh, when I'm with you type cut, when I, I love, I love the song. Also really like Brilliant Days too. It's chill but kind of cute and it's it's energetic, it's vibrant. I actually used to listen to it a lot. Good song. On July 25th of the same year, 2012, Keita Eddie dropped her first major album, Restory, and I'm actually real enough to have the deluxe version of the CD, uh, same with Shomei, because I'm so goaded. The CD has 13 cuts, but I'll just talk about the highlights. First being Shiruushi, which actually got a single release the year before. I love this cut because it sounds kind of grand and whatnot, I don't know how to explain it, triumphant. Kind of like how when I listen to like Blue Blue Blueprint by Jay-Z for the first time, I don't know, it just kind of sounds like gigantic. I also love when uh, Kita Eri cuts have like the traditional uh, agent instrument things, which is very much more common uh, in the next album though, to me, and the hook is wrong. I also like the next song, Ashiato, but mainly for the uh, first 40 seconds of the song. Nice intro. The next song I like is Alive. Um, I didn't care for the song too much at first, but uh, I remember a while ago, maybe this was 2020, 2021, uh, the, it, it, there was an Osu map for the song, and since like I was good at the game and I was like trying out five star maps, I was like, hey, every Kitamura Osu map, you know what? Let's try it. And it was alive, and now I kind of have like a, a little attachment to alive. Probably a very stressful one, more so than relaxing, but regardless, it is an attachment. The song My Way has a nice hook and ending. That's also sort of a highlight song. I like my singing a lot. I used to listen to it pretty often. It doesn't really hit the same anymore, but it is really super chill and slow. And it makes me feel kind of similar to, uh, I guess those 2000s like R&B or dance hall songs, maybe like, you know, like dance, like you know, stuff like. Well, not really like romp and shop, man. <laughs> Okay, so even though this single only has one song that really impacts me quite literally, it is the only one I care about as much. I don't even know if I remember the title. I think it's like over the other song. Whatever, I don't know. 
Uh, and it is included on a later Keep That Area album, which I try not to do unless there's like a unique song on there. But it is Miracle Glide. The song served as the opening for a PSP visual novel called Sui Heisen Made Nan Mayu, Deep Blue Sky and Pure White Wings, with Kita Eri providing the voice of the character Kashi Masumi. I have no idea, I know nothing about Sui Heisen Made Nan Mayu, but uh, I kind of want a copy of it one day, but last time I checked it was like 70 bucks, like I want to have it like just for the fact. But other than that, I have no knowledge on it. Um, I think I have like an ISO of it raw or something one time when I was testing out PPSSP, maybe? I don't know. So but about the cut itself, um, I the reason I gave it like a little section here more so than every other single, every other single, is that... I don't know dude, I, I just, the cut just means so much to me. Before talking about the song though, first the cover scans, and a little bit about the music video. I believe depending on whether you own the limited edition, you'd either get this close up of Eddie Kitamura, or just her sitting on the beach from afar. I like both equally, I kind of think the beach is raw, but at the same time I love uh, Eddie Kitamura's like makeup and the nails, uh, the acrylic thing going on, but her in the like front of the I don't know it's also kind of like creepy like please I kind of don't know I don't I don't I kind of don't like when on the back of the booklet you get uh, Eddie Kitamura just playing with the sand uh like next to the shore that is one of my favorite pictures ever it's on my car too I don't know why I just love it so much it's just beautiful dog it's raw the little background of those CD insert things like the thing that are on that's on the inside not like the booklet you can't take it out I don't know what it's called. It's a shot of the shore though, and it's really beautiful. I love it. In the booklet, uh, there's of course, you know, the lyrics, of course, like most, you know, well, even some like older American, I know like rap CDs do it. But the lyrics and Eddie Kitamura leaning on some like wooden structure. Uh, however, the m what, something a little more unique is there's a back cover uh, that has one of the girls from the VN, I'm guessing it's Kashi Masumi, I don't know, man. Um, and I like the picture a lot, actually. I've used it as, like, a profile picture a couple times, I think. I talked about these scans because it's just one of my favorite designs for her CDs. Right next to Rin Rei and Shoumei and Guilty Future. Like, I just love how uh, those designs look. Like, they're, they're, they're so raw. The music video, it kind of does reflect the same aesthetic that the cover had going, and I like that a lot. The MV transitions between, like, uh, Eddie Kitamura walking on a beach and being with, like, these band guys in this white room. She also has this dog. There's the dog. However, the opening for the VNs is really sick. I love the opening for the VN. I have, like, a remastered or like a AI upscale I did of the opening on my channel it's it's, a, it's such a dog it's so it's such a good opening but about the actual song I kind of don't know how to explain why I like the song so much but compared to it the, her other cuts I've just listened to it so much and I listened to it daily for at least a year I had like the visual novel opening as my background when I still cared about wallpaper engine even like every time I tab out of something I would hear the start of miracle glider like I was feeling it that much I loved it I like know it word for word bar for bar it's chill and angelic but it also kind of like has energy it kind of makes you like you know I I don't know how to explain the feeling I I'm not really that. In April of 2014, Eddie Kitamura dropped her second album, Shoumei. In a way, I think this album is... Okay, I pronounced that kind of oddly, Shoumei, not Shoumei. Is, okay. In a way, I think this album is superior, but it could go the other way depending on like your taste. But, I mean, I personally kind of like Shoumei just a little bit more. I feel like the highs are definitely higher. First of all, the art on this album is actually really raw. I love her like nails, dude. They they inspired me a little bit. Sometime, the like multicolored. That is too raw. Too raw. Anyway, about the songs. 
Nullfictionista is so goaded. It has like a jazz pop thing going on. It's so chill and dreamy. I love this cut. I love her vocals on this cut. Man, this makes this song make me kind of feel like a like a 1970s baddie, like kind of like it, like like in a noir movie. What? I like Destiny a lot too. Actually, it was used for a PSP game called Entaku no Seito. I know absolutely nothing about it, hey, but I mean, W, that's cool that you, that this song, that this song, that, that, I, I, and I, I, I like. I like Charlotte Seeker too. Sentiment and Friend as well. I don't have too many comments on these because literally the next song on the album is uh, Miracle Gliders after all those. But those are really some good songs. After Miracle Gliders though, Pleasure Link comes on and the cut is so full of energy. Right behind Miracle Gliders, it was probably my favorite song a lot for a while. It's kind of like a contrast of Miracle Gliders being chill. This one's super energetic. It's got like that freaking cute rock sound. I love this song so much. <laughs> Next song, M. I don't. I don't really know how to say. I don't know how to like you. I don't know. Which literally, I I have a weird relationship with the song mainly because it's quite literally just the same song, uh, from one of her earlier singles, Tuning, but with a more showmay sound. Like it. It's more. I'll I'll play. I'll play it. <laughs> Alright, now to cap it off though, with the heavy J-Rock type album approach she went with, Revolution Ray. Now, the reason why I'm ending it here, uh, which this album would have came out maybe 2017, and there are um, some like Eri Kitamura things I do like after this, like Shine Going Up is uh, actually like a really good uh, post-Revolution Ray Eri Kitamura song. But, honestly, uh, most of this stuff after Revolution Ray, like for example, uh, Yui Hore, like Yui Hore kind of had the same thing to me, like their styles just kind of changed and they're different. Like, 
they went from having like nine to ten level albums to having like eight seven and a half that's still those are still good albums but they just don't hit me the same and therefore i never uh have the earth to come back to them like it's kind of like how yui hore kind of i guess honestly i kind of didn't really care too much for her stuff after um kimitsu or maybe even honey jet arguably kind of like but anyway, I know every I know everyone likes uh, Illusion Dream, for example. But I really just don't. I never care for it too much. Actually, I kind of reevaluated on it. I think it's definitely better than I used to. Um, I thought it was like horrible at first, but it's kind of grew on me. Uh, what was it? Iridescent Vision. I listened to that like a, a, a couple. I think it was a couple days after it came up. Um, Shine going up was used for it. I liked the little PF mix things, and I think the last track, like before all those remixes came, all was cool. But I don't really care. Um, so Revolution Ray. First of all, covers for the both the original and uh, limited edition are raw. But the songs here, they kind of feel like I love every cut here. But I think maybe Miracle Premonition is my favorite. It feels like some Shinji would have made in the late 2000s or early 2010s. Also really like Koi Hanabi a lot. It kind of feels like a Shomei song, dude. I I just love this tape. I don't know why it it's it's different. It's very it feels very different but familiar to every other Eri Kitamura release. That's like the last Eri Kitamura release that I think is like masterpiece level. That's it. I see you guys next time when I make like a. Like a the Yui Hore, I have to I I I, I Yui Hore video one day, guys. That's it. It will be in like 20 minutes. <laughs>